and welcome back. And if you haven't done so already, please like the video. And if you can, if it's possible, subscribe to the channel. And if you could also just click on that old bell button thingy, Bob, to get future notifications on videos. So onwards and upwards with the main sort of like Gumbay, Bombay type thing. Yeah, there's a lot of parts and there is a lot of squeezing in to do. Some of it I was able to film, some of it I wasn't. Simply because I had to get up off my ass and actually go over and put it, the actual kit on a jig, i.e. the upside down lid of the box, to actually get it actually to fit in. So, what am I doing? Right, well, these are the ammunition boxes for the 20mm um, Hispano cannons. Um, it is a sort of like four or five part affair. And after a bit of clean up, they fit together really well. Um, but bear in mind, like a lot of things in this kit, just make sure you put it around the right way. Because I was like, uh, uh, what will I do now? Um, yeah, the instructions are good. I will say that. However, just make sure you look at it and make sure you put it in the right position. Okay, it will save you a hell of a lot of our sake um, in the future, as it were. But saying that, like I said, once you've cleaned it up, they fit together really well. And uh, and yeah, once you paint it up and weathered, yeah, Bobby Dazzler. Right, you do have two fuel pods, um, as it were. Two part fair, um, glued them together, and they fit rather well. Um, once you've sort of like cleaned them up uh, and stuck them in, you can only see the sort of like the top and maybe quarter of the width of it. So, yeah, do what you like with that. Anyway, back to the ammunition boxes. Now, with reference pictures, I've had a look and they're not exactly smooth, as it were. So what I decided is I've got some Mr. Surfacer 1200, got a stippling brush or a very stiff brush, popped it on and stippled it. And I made a sort of like a rough surface or some texture to it. Now, you'll see many, many different period pictures or reference pictures. I can guarantee you they're all gonna be different at some point but I'm going with the ones that I've seen. So once that was done and dried and I was happy, I got some flat brown and I went for it. Now these could have been internal or interior gray green. They could have been black. They could have been brown. They could have been any color, but my reference pictures were saying that it was brown. Now paint it, as you want, what colour you want, it really doesn't matter, it's up to you. But I went for brown because that was in my reference book. Later on, I will be doing some highlighting and some dry brushing on them just to give it a bit more of a definition and a change of colour. I also, oh, I forgot, um, the actual fuel pods, I actually textured them the same way as the actual um, ammunition crates. So there we go. I'm going to be using, I think that's desert yellow. Yeah. Anyway, I've just lined up the brown and all I'm doing is going through and just highlighting bits and bobs. So once the lightening up was done, um, I just went back with the Desert Yellow, which is XF59, and just dry brushed the raised details on the actual boxes and the actual frame itself. 
Um, you could paint the frame another color if you wanted to, um, black, interior green, whatever you wanted to do. Um, but I elected just to paint the whole thing brown. And highlight, um, which still, I suppose, in a way, change the color or the tinge or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I was happy with the results in hand. And there you go. Those are the ammunition boxes, all done and all dusted. Ooh, look, all ready for, um, get off, all ready for bits. So those are the fuel pods. Um, again, I used the Mr. Surfacer 1200 and I used uh, two kinds of red, as you can see with the Hataka paints, which are lacquers. Now, the base coat for this was the cherry red. Um, I do quite like that because it's quite a nice deep red or colored red. And once I was happy, I got the coverage that I wanted, then I went over with traffic red, I believe it was, which is a slightly lighter um, shade, which does give um, a bit of contrast actually between the two. So when that was all dry and I was happy, all I did was cut in with the traffic red. So the next thing I pondered was um, the framing for the actual cannons themselves. And for this, all I did was I used a rubber black, um, the Tamiya, which is XF85, I believe. Uh, if not, please send your answers on a postcard. And yeah, in general, I just went all over using the rubber black and then I cut in using a lighter gray, I think it was uh, Royal, light gray i think it was just to basically give it a bit more of a definition a bit more of a wall look and yeah i was happy with the result so with that and armed with my normal um dry brushing brush i went for it and um, yeah it really brings out some some of the definition and detail so yeah royal light gray and there you go So once that was all done, um, we can really think about starting putting things together. So it was just a case of um, putting the ammunition boxes uh, onto the frames. Um, as you can see, there are three separate frames and all you've got to do, and it's pretty basic enough, is to make sure that you get the right ones on the right pins. Go on, say it. Yes, I got it wrong. I'll put it on the wrong one. Yeah, I know, I'm a div.
truth be known, um, that side nearest to my thumb there, that frame there is um, <clears throat> it's upside down. Never mind, carry on, sir. Okay, now I've embarrassed myself, I shall do some more painting. Yes, this time, as you can see, with a brush. Yeah, all I was doing was painting a sky grey um, from Vallejo, not Vallejo, Vallejo. Um, the actual harnesses that um, basically keep the fuel pods actually inside the actual cockpit itself. Um, and yeah, once they were done, I was happy with it. It was really basically on to the weathering stage. So believe it or not, it's the dark wash time. Yeah, you didn't believe that, did you? Woo. Anyway, um, yeah, same thing. I want to give a bit of um, sort of like wear and sort of like dirty it up, you know, fingers and hands and fuel and oil and goodness knows what else will get onto these types of um, equipment. So I just went around the edges and went around into the center parts and just basically left it to dry just a little bit and then came in with uh, some X20 enamel thinners and just started to take it off or really leave what I wanted actually on the fuel pods. So, as a quick test fit, I just popped them in. Um, once they're actually in, you can actually see then that you can't really see too much of it. So, I really wouldn't worry about too much about painting the whole actual thing itself. It's not necessary. Anyway, these are the nuts and bolts. These are from the other one. I can't remember, so I'm leaning over. Air Master Series. Yeah, these are the brass barrels for the hispano cannons now prep is important so get said part of kit find out where you need to snip it and ping yeah it flew off somewhere i can't find it but anyway all it is a simple case of bit of a clean taking off one of the little stubs that's on the top because that's going to be replaced with a um, with a brass rod, which I think is the retaining spring for the recoil. Um, so once that was done, tied it up, and you know the seam line that was taken off, you can basically drill a hole, same as I did with the three hundred threes, and basically super glue it in. Once they're in, as in making sure they're all nice and straight, you can carry on and basically put the rest of the gun barrel together. It was pretty self-explanatory. There's not a lot of parts to it. And actually, once they're actually glued in and they are as straight as you possibly can, they are really good. So, without trying to make you suck eggs, when you do an S, you want to glue it with super glue. So with the gun barrels all glued and <clears throat> straight, it was time for painting. Now, I don't use a said uh, metal primer. 
I'll just simply just use um, the actual um, Tamiya paint as a base color. And for this, I just went straight for, believe it or not, the rubber black. Um, yeah, uh, quite a few coats just to make sure that it goes down. Um, also, it gets into all the nooks and crannies. The reason why I say that is because you've got that big retailing spring at the front of the gun barrel. So you want to make sure that you get all the paint in all the places. Once you're happy with that and you know, you've left it to dry, you've come back, you've repainted it again if you so wish, then crack on with the rest. Now what I'm doing there is I'm just giving it a base coat which is the ammunition feed shoots that will actually feed it from the actual uh, ammunition cases to the actual main gun themselves. So to try and give um, the Espano cannons a bit of a um, lively look, um, I dry brushed them. Now I didn't use a light grey for this, I used quite a dark one, I think it was dark sea grey. Because um, I didn't want it to be like a, a wow bang in your face contrast between the rubber black and the actual dry brushing itself. So I went for the subtle look and afterwards I think yeah. I made the right decision. So after all that was uh, <clears throat> done, oh look, I fitted it. Yeah, the fit's really good actually. Um, and once it's in, you've got the stubs and the holes. Once they're in, in the right place, they do actually secure it really, really well. And hopefully you can see some of the weathering which I've done in the actual bay itself. All I've got to do now is to fit the ammunition drums onto the actual cannons themselves and try and get them in, which I did, thankfully, but not, unfortunately, on camera, because you just can't do it. I haven't got the equipment or the know-how to actually show you how to do that. Anywho, one of the things, well, one of the last things I'm just about to show you now is the actual bomb rack that you can put actually in the bomb bay. I haven't put all of the equipment onto the bomb rack purely because I'm not having a bomb on it. Whether it was detachable or not, I don't know, but in my reference pictures, you do see it with and without. So it's entirely up to you. If you're having bombs in it, then obviously you are gonna put it on. But for mine, no, it isn't gonna have them. I am happy to say though, that everything does fit really well. It fits just as well, or if not better, than the actual um, ammunition boxes um, that were fitted um, way, way before this. So, yeah, you can bring it back now, Lenny. Ooh. I wanna lose some weight. Okay now, jeez. Anyway, get back on it now. Um, but yeah, you can see for yourself, drop a super glue into the holes, pop it on, Bob's your uncle and Derek's your, I don't know, man friend. So once all that was done, all it was a case of was putting the fuselage sides that will cover the actual bay itself. Now, they are a bit tight fit. Um, there is a bit of a jiggling to get them in properly, but once they're in and they're glued, they do sort of like stay pretty well. But just for a bit of insurance, I'll just put some Tamiya tape over it just to keep it together and basically to make sure that when the glue dries, that they stay in exactly the same place as I want them. So Geekoids, that is it. That is the bay itself. Um, there are a couple of things which I didn't show you, purely because I couldn't. 
um, because it was a question of moving over to the uh, high-tech jig that I made, as in the upside down of the box, to actually get the gun barrels in. I just simply couldn't do it, as in filming it properly. Um, but I will assure you that they do fit really well. If you're going from the kit parts, excellent. If you're using the brass um, uh, gun barrels, just make sure that they are straight. And yeah, they do fit really, really well. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And for all those who don't like my little mate here. Fuck you. <laughs>